Oh, okay, let's do this. AEW Dynamite. You know what? I haven't been back with a lot of Dynamite reviews lately. Maybe last week or two. I don't even know. But, man, I got to talk about this show because, listen, folks, the big footage. The footage was going to be revealed tonight. Everything that happened at All In back in London that was over nine months ago back in September. But the footage was going to be shown. We're going to see what really went down with CM Punk and Jack Perry. And trust me, I got a lot more to say about this show, but we're going to get to the footage in a few minutes, okay? So let's get through this show right now, because tonight, AEW Dynamite, where were we, where were we tonight? Uh, Charleston, West Virginia, okay? So we're going to kick it off. It's supposed to be Samoa Joe versus Dustin Rhodes. Uh, well, I thought it was for the AEW World title, but I guess this was a title eliminator match. I still think it's hilarious that Dustin Rhodes, even when I, I saw the promo... He did. I didn't watch Collision. Obviously, WrestleMania was on, but uh, what? I saw the promo video about Dustin wanting gold, and I could have saw he said he was going for the world title, which is funny to me because, one, uh, let me get this straight. We didn't have one Rhodes brother who just won the WWE Championship at WrestleMania, so now the other Rhodes brother is like, hey, we got Rhodes brother here. He could finish his story. Cody finished his story, so now Dustin Rhodes can finish the story and become the world champion now. That's where we're going for this, right? And I'm thinking this is about to go down right now. We're going to get kicked off at the beginning, but it ended up with Swerve attacking Samoa Joe from behind. They brawled for a minute. Um, uh, I know Joe set up a table and Swerving up, spearing him through the uh, table then right after that, just, you know, uh, leaving him there. He ended up getting up back to his feet, but we won't hear anything about that till later. Uh, right after that, we had Edge versus Pentagon Jr. I swear I haven't seen Pentagon in a minute, or they really have been on TV, and they just really had nothing for him. But, you know, this was a good match. Uh, I thought it was really good. I feel like Pentagon hasn't done nothing in a while now. Um, but I, I did like the match, and, you know, Edge and Pentagon were really good. Edge ended up hitting like a mid-air spear after um, Pentagon went for a springboard. Uh, Edge ended up winning the match, still retained the TNT Championship. So it was a good match. But right after that, the lights go out. Julia Hart shows up with Brody King. And Edge is getting his ass kicked out here, right? I'm thinking to myself, where's Mark Briscoe and Eddie Kingston? But they send Willow Nightingale. Well, yeah, because Julia Hart is out there. But I'm sitting there wondering, like, where's, you know, Kingston and uh, Mark Briscoe at? Where are they? And Edge is getting his ass kicked. Willow comes for the save. I guess Julia tried to miss her, but because it's like someone missed on um Willow's face, but I, I guess she couldn't get out of the way. But Willow ended up knocking Julia out the ring. Uh, her and Brody King have a stare down in. Edge goes back after uh, Brody King and, you know, ends up just ducking a clothesline. He ended up falling over to the floor and then. But, yeah, it, I kind of wonder where they were at, but it was a good match. Um... Right after that, they interviewed Chris Jericho, Hook, and um, Shibata, which basically Chris Jericho now is taking the leader like, okay, you all are going to listen to me now, okay? We're going to do this tag match. I'm going to do this, then Hook's going to tag in, and then Shibata's going to do this, and then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to get the win, and this is all that's going to happen, okay? We're going to have a lot of success, and, you know, for a better future and all this stuff. This is just all. Everybody just listen to Chris Jericho, basically, okay? So, like, all right, on, on three. Everybody put our fist in, all right? And then Shibata, who has a tra uh, translator, because, you know, Hook's like, bet, bet, and, you know, Shibata's the bet, and he even tells his translator, what's the deal? And Hook says, just just trust him, okay, just trust him. And then Shibata just tells Renee Young, you know, um, I like your necklace, so, okay, uh, <laughs> that's something. Uh, by the way, they had a countdown that's supposed to lead into this whole, um, footage at Wembley with the Young Bucks. Why do they have a countdown for this? I don't know. Uh, right after that, Mark Briscoe and Eddie Kingston, they were being interviewed in the back. Edge and Willow uh, came into play, you know, basically what's going to happen in Dynasty and stuff, and the six-man tag, the rated Chicken Hawks, or whatever they're going to be calling themselves right now. But next week, it would be Edge and um, Willow Nightingale versus Brody King and Julia Hart, so that's going to go down. But now let's get to the footage, folks. The footage that everybody wants to see, because I feel like this is a desperate attempt for ratings, given that they announced this on WrestleMania that day. Or was it Sunday or Saturday night or something? But basically this. The Young Bucks, they're backstage somewhere, and they're just just talking and talking and teasing. We're going to show you the footage, but we're going to put some context into it. Basically, Jack Perry, the scapegoat, who's a friend of ours from California and all that, and we're not going to uh, talk about the other individual, but he's friends with FTR, basically. 
So they said we were thrown off our game. We had our EVP hats on and just talking and talking and talking about everything that happened in London. I guess to talk about the tag match. So this is the footage we see. And there's no audio to this. So this is the real footage, folks, of CM Punk and, um, and you know, Jack Perry. So Jack Perry's there. CM Punk walked up to him. And I guess they were talking. And it ended up with Punk shoving him and basically front face lock and choking him out. Samoa Joe was there. Samoa Joe ended up having help pull him off. I think some referees and, you know, you see so many people there. It's like a lot of people in the video and stuff. And I don't know if they knew it was ever going to escalate. I didn't think it was going to be a fight, but they ended up pulling him off. And I'm looking at this like, that's it. That's the footage. Basically, everything CM Punk said in the Ariel Hawaii interview was the truth. Like, who, who looks good coming out of this? And I'm sitting there looking at it. So where's the part where CM Punk lunges at Tony Khan to where he fears from his life? Because, man, you know, in all my years of watching wrestling for over 20-something years now, um, I, I've never been in fear of my life of such footage to what I saw tonight. So I guess if you go look, I guess right behind the monitors, you could see CM Punk move his arm. Looking at Tony Khan, that's the part where he says, I quit, uh, you're a clown, and basically left out after that. So, what, what, who, like, what, what was proven here? Like, I get, I guess the Bucks are just using this as an angle and kayfabe to promote their match with FTR, but it doesn't make Jungle Boy look good at all. He basically got his ass kicked right here and looks like a bitch after that. So, that didn't make him look good. This was a desperate attempt to get ratings. No one prevailed. You're basically talking. You, you basically still need CM Punk to talk about at this point, who is still the biggest draw in this company, I guess, that we had to keep promoting this on Wednesday because the ratings look like crap right now. And, and I, I don't know, just. I, I, I don't understand this. Like, the ratings look like crap. What, what was this? Like, he's in another company. This was nine months ago. This was a long time ago now. CM Punk's back in the WWE. He's bigger than ever. And now you just made him even more popular. He told the truth. Everything he said in the interview, now he told the truth. Jungle Boy just looks like a bitch right here. Who who looked good out of this? I'm, I'm serious. Like, who really looked good out of any of this? Just CM Punk. Everything he said was true. So, and I'm like, it's not like it was some wild brawl back there. It's like Punk said, like, you know, he walked up to him, he tried to talk to him, and I guess Jack Perry said, uh, which provoked Punk, say, well, what are you going to do about it? It's like Punk said, like Chanel S Shell Sodden said, don't let him get too close, and Punk, Punk choked him and kind of maybe shoved him and just beat his ass. So, what, who looked good coming out of all of this? What, I don't, I don't get it. And then the Bucks say this wasn't the worst part of the incident, and... You know, we were trying to create a wrestling show, but some people wanted to go into business for themselves and talked about FTR and their pricks and stuff. So it's like, dude, we're talking about a guy that's been out of this company for over nine months who's even a bigger star in the other company right now. And now you've even made him more popular. And now, like, by God, you might as well not even bring Jack Perry back to AEW at this point and just keep him over there in New Japan. And I know they got a show coming over here this Friday in Chicago. That's going to make him look way worse. So what what was proven here? Nothing was proven here. And then FTR come out. FTR starts cutting his promo then. Like, this is what we're doing. We're talking about the past. We're talking about footage from Wembley and all this. And... You know, they start calling them Rod and Todd Flanders, and they're, you know, they're um, petty little bitches and all this stuff. And then they start going on this long, drawn-out, kind of hollow promo, talking about, you know, AEW and all the people. This is who we're working for now. We're talking about the people that have jobs in this company that are trying to make this a, a, you know, a better place. And they just start naming a whole bunch of people. And, you know, like, we care about this company more and the future of all the wrestlers in the back. And... And they say, you know, while, you know, they should just, you know, tell the Bucks, take your ball and go home and you don't want to be part of this company. And, you know, it's not about Wembley or All Out and all this stuff. You know, it's about the business and the AEW tag titles. So, I I don't know, man. That promo just kind of was going on for a minute. So, I, it's like I said, what, I, I don't, I don't get it. Why? Like, so, all this because he did an interview. The, the, Tony had to get his, 
he wanted to get his lick back, I guess. He wanted to prove something. Man, I'll tell you, AEW's not had a good week and a half. They they are not. And, oh, trust me, it gets even better. Uh, you want to talk about taking shots, we'll get to the next person taking shots in a second here. So we go to Will Ospreay now, who's up next to talk about his prom, you know, his match with um Brian Danielson coming up at um Dynasty and talking about grit and the grind and all that and talked about he's traveled back and forth from the UK basically every week to be on this show. And now he took a shot at Triple H. And, and listen, I didn't see what Triple H said in one of the... I guess he said during one of the WrestleMania press conferences or something. I didn't see it, so I didn't really know why he was taking a shot at uh, Triple H. But basically said, you know... Um, but, you know, I talk about the bait and, you know, the guy, uh, you know, was only in the position he's is because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. And, and listen, man, I've seen enough people make that joke for many years now. Hell, I can go back to Scott Steiner saying it in TNA in like, what, 2006 or seven. You know, I don't care how many times Triple H had to sleep with the boss's daughter, I beat him. I've seen a lot of people make that shot for years now. So, yes, he, and that is true. It's true. It's not like we don't know. Yeah, he is in the position he is when you really think about it because he did marry the boss's daughter. So there you go. But then, you know, he talks about the grind and all that and what he fights for. And the rest of the promo was good and stuff. But, you know, he says Danielson's a living legend, but I'm going to prove I'm the best wrestler in the world once I beat you. But, yeah, out of nowhere. Well, I guess I can't say out of nowhere because Triple H did say something first at a press conference. But I just thought it was like, why is he taking shots at Triple H now? So I, I heard about what he said about the pay and why he didn't end up joining with WWE. But, yeah, that was just out of nowhere. Hook, Chris Jericho, and Shibata went against Shane Taylor Promotions. Andy, Anthony Agogo is back and is in their crew now. It ended up basically with Moriarty hitting his finisher on Shibata as Jericho and Hook kept arguing after that, and Hook checked on Shibata. So we'll see what happens there. Dustin Rhodes talked about his match tonight with um, Samoa Joe. So, well, I'll get to that in a second. Um, Okada, who did he even go against? Um, Okada. Cristiano Argentino, I don't really know him, but Okada won, Rainmaker, boom, and then he got on the microphone and said he accepts Pac's challenge, next thing you know, Pac comes out, and um, the Young Bucks attack from behind, and basically, you can hear a loud CM Punk chant happen, so what did this prove, that the people still want to cheer for CM Punk, even in AEW still, so the fans are still on Punk's side in this crowd, I see. It's like, what? wow, like, what is this going to do? Make people boo at Punk? Now you got people chanting CM Punk now out there. And then FTR tried to come for the save. And then Okada had a chair in. Which, by the way, I guess he ended up just hitting Pac's shoulder or, or, or something. But I was on the chair, hit his head. And then they did the EVP thing on FTR. And boom, there you go. That was it. Um, I guess something about Supercard and Honor. But no, no, no. Let me get, hold on a second. But no. Yeah, the CM Punk chant. That's that's just hilarious. Um, right after that, Billy Gunn. I guess they showed some with Supercar Honor, where the Gun Club attacked them. Um, not the Gun Club, but uh, the acclaimed attack Bullet Club Gold and Jay White wants to face um, Billy Gunn on Rampage. Like, wait, did he want to face? He was on the face on Rampage. Like, didn't he just get his ass kicked by Billy Gunn last week? Like, if I remember, Billy was beating the, the shit out of Jay White last week. So, why is he challenging him to another match? Like, you got the crap kicked out of you. And it was a DQ finish. So, why? why? I don't I don't understand that. Um, Right after that, Renee Young was back on stage. Thunder Rosa and Tony Storm were, have, were supposed to have some toast with champagne. Tony Storm basically was a fake, I, I don't know, just pulled a fake or, you know, a, a pullover. Or, you know, basically a ruse on... Thunder Rosa and ended up beating up Thunder Rosa. Deanna Perrazzo came out for the save. She tried to help up Thunder Rosa, but um, Thunder Rosa pushed her away. Mariah May came out then, basically getting ready for her match to go against Anna J for some odd reason. I don't even know why. What does this have to do with the pay per view coming up? I feel like, and once again, it's in the eight thirty death spot. So yeah, the crowd doesn't even really care then. And I'm sitting there one. I'm just looking at this match, and even I was looking at my phone because. I saw comments now saying, like, Anna J needs to lead Jungle Boy after he got the crap kicked out of him. I'm just seeing jokes from there. But Mariah May won with, like, a roll-up pin. But I wonder why was this match even happening. And then right after, I didn't know who this woman was when she came out. I guess Excalibur only really knew. But Mina um, Shirokara 
which she got no reaction coming out there. She was from stardom, and I'm like, I'm sitting there wondering, like, I don't know who this girl is. I have never seen her a day in my life. I'm like, who is this? It just comes and helps um, uh, Mariah May there, but they kept saying, she, like, she's from stardom. They were tag team partners in stardom. Like, I'm like, I don't know who the hell this woman even is. Like, who is this girl? Like, I'm serious. And next thing you know, she's got champagne, and she pours it into Mariah May's mouth and drinks some, and then she starts making out with her, like... I'm sitting there like, what is going on here? Like, what it, What am I watching here? Like, I, I don't get it. Like, I don't know this girl. And I, you guys saw online, like, what? So some girl with, from stardom with some big titties and stuff just making out with Mariah May. Like, yeah, it's it looked hot. Yeah, it caught my attention. I, I didn't mind it. I'm not going to complain about it. But what does this have to do with the pay-per-view? Like, it was hot. That was it. But then again, who knows this woman? I don't know who Mina Shur uh, Shurikawa is. So, I w even the crowd didn't know. Like, do they even watch Stardom like that? They didn't know. They didn't know. And then Mercedes Monet, who cut a promo and uh, was doing an interview in the back with Alex Marvez. Basically, she won't wrestle till double or nothing until May. Why is she here? You hired this woman to be here to not do nothing until double. Listen, if you knew she wasn't ready, why is she here? What are they paying her for? Why is she here? What what is the point of this? I I I don't get it. What is the point of this? This this is dumb. This is all dumb. Like I I don't get it. And like I I don't even know why. She, like dude, why did you bring her in the company when she was actually ready? So she won't wrestle at Dynasty, but we gotta wait till May till double or nothing. So, it's been, what, five weeks now since she's debuted, and all she's done is talk. And this promo, some felt like it was either forced or disingenuous, or just bad, or just, why is it? It's it just like it was like a forced promo, and she's talking about Willow, and what they did for the New Japan Strong Women's title, how she got hurt, and that she hates to lose. And then the lights go out, and then she's on the ground, so a mystery person attacked her. Maybe it was Julia Hart, I have no idea. And then in the main event, we got Samoa Joe versus Dustin Rhodes. Not for the AEW world title, but in an eliminator match. So, listen, Dustin Rhodes has to finish the story tonight, everybody. This man even hit a crossroads from out of nowhere. I'm surprised he wouldn't start chanting Cody in the crowd. Like, what? why? It's like, okay, one Rhodes main event at WrestleMania. The other Rhodes without main event Dynamite. We just won't give him the world title. But now he has to finish his story too. And the finish was just what? Um, Joe was going to use the chain and the referee took it away because Dustin was bleeding out there anyways. But it ended up with just Samoa Joe using the title belt to beat Dustin Rhodes and that was it. That was it. And it ended up choking out uh, Dustin but Swerve came in with the house call. And, you know, tried to hit uh, Joe with the chain, and he got out the ring, and Swerve and Prince Nana did the dance and celebrated. So, this show, man, you know, I didn't mind Edge and Pentagon in the beginning. I didn't even mind some of the beginning of this show. But once we got, like, this whole show is mostly now known for the footage we've seen with CM Punk and Jack Perry. And how CM Punk basically beat this man's ass and choked him out. And basically proved him right. And told the truth. Everything else from this. From people from stardom. I don't even know about. Why am I seeing Mariah May and Anna J? FTR's promo and all that. We got a CM Punk chant. Um, the Mercedes thing. is just more talk. And wasn't even all that. And she can't really do anything. Until double or nothing. Um, and we had Dustin Rhodes. Because Cody main event. And had to fi he finished his story. Now, you know, now he's got to finish his story too. Dustin and Will Ospreay took shots at Triple H on the show tonight. People want to talk about Edge's promo about trying to get away from tribalism and all that stuff. But uh, now he tried to do the rally, rah-rah the troops and stuff. But now, by, after a week, we're taking shots again. So, I have said this before. After that interview with CM Punk and a whole bunch of other things with AEW going on last week, Tony Khan is shook right now. This man is shook. I still want to see the part where he feared for his life. But yeah, 
this, this just, I, I, I don't know. Why didn't Dustin just come out saying, oh, your brother won, like, my brother won a title, now I want to win a title. I don't, I, I don't get any of this show tonight. I, I tell you, I don't. But, man, this was, I had to review this of the spectacle, what I saw in this show. Because I'm like, that was the footage, folks. We waited nine months to see this with no audio. But, hey, no, I guess we don't really need it. This is all what Punk said. It's all he said in the interview. So, boom, there you go. Who looked good coming out of this? Who looked good coming out of this? But please, tell me what you thought about Dynamite tonight. Please tell me, because I want to know. I really want to know. Because, man, this show was bad. The footage, everybody, Wembley. Wembley. But I am done with this. Comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at Hooded Night 890. I am out of here. See y'all then. Peace. Good God, this, this company, I tell you.